Welcome to your astrological forecast for the week of Monday, November 1st through Sunday, November 7th. It's already November. It's already almost 2022. <laughs> uh, but this week is a pretty big week in astrology. So we do have a Scorpio new moon and we have two planets changing signs. That would be Mercury and Venus. So definitely an exciting time. Definitely a new beginning. We definitely have a very much, very, very much of a new beginning around the middle of the week. So that's definitely interesting so let's get into it so for monday november 1st we have mercury at 22 degrees of libra trining jupiter at 22 degrees of aquarius and i really love this so these are both planets that are focused on learning and expansion so they're very philosophical and they do well in these signs mercury you know is kind of airy it feels comfortable in earth and the air signs uh, Libra is very intellectual, so Mercury does well there. We're, you know, able to be very considerate or reflective of things. And then Jupiter is very philosophical, and um, Aquarius is too. Jupiter is kind of holistic, and so is Aquarius. And so these planets really blend well together. So this is an excellent dynamic for socializing and also for sharing ideas. This is a great time for teaching, studying, um, any anything like academic or intellectual or studious, or also just spending time with friends. So this is also just really sociable. So, so you know, with the, with this air, with this dominance of air that we see in this uh, aspect here, it's great for sharing ideas and information. But that can range from very complex, very studious or scholarly information, or just very mundane like gossip it doesn't have to be really complex at all it could just be random jokes dumb jokes with your friends or whatever just goofing off um it could be really anything the air energy is all just about that mixing of all kinds of different information and and stimuli so that's really um something that's kind of beautiful and can be fun i think here so so yeah definitely could be productive or just having fun and let's see here, moon does enter Libra late on Monday or early on Tuesday, depending on where you are. And this adds some more light, detached, and sociable energy to the mix. Very airy, airy day on Monday. So yeah, generally kind of just light and breezy, not very serious at all. Going into Tuesday, November 2nd, moon continues through Libra, um, thinning now to a sliver of a crescent as we prepare for Thursday's Scorpio new moon. This last part of the lunar cycle is typically calm and can be dark or spiritual. I feel like I should explain that more. So yeah, so I mean, so yeah, this couple, you know, this couple days before a new moon, it's the closing out of the cycle. The moon has little to no light at this point. And so the moon, which rules emotion and intuition, it's basically MIA. The moon is obscured from our vision. And so the things that the moon represents, you know, again, emotion, intuition, spirituality to some extent, those things are all there. The moon is still there. It's just obscured. And so all of those things that it represents are obscured from our view as well. In other words, there's more going on behind the scenes at this time. So on a physical level, things are very quiet. It's good for like resting, um, that type of thing, reflecting. But it's almost like things are more noisy on a subconscious level or, you know, there's more going on behind the scenes. There's more, there's a lot of energy that's about to be birthed into the world on the new moon. So that's kind of what I was trying to explain. And it can be peaceful, but it can also have kind of a dark context. The moon is literally dark at this time. So you can kind of just, I don't know, just ponder that. And I think you'll understand what I'm saying if you apply it to these times. Mercury trines Pluto in Libra and I'm sorry that doesn't make sense. Plu Mercury Mercury squares Pluto in Libra and Capricorn respectively, signifying a major turning point in our goals and relationships. This may have to do with the same issues, the goals and relations that we've been working on for the last month, especially while Mercury was retrograde. So, yeah, so think about what have you been working on this past month? For most of October, there was some part of your life that you had to go back over, rethink, you know, reorganize or reassess your stance on. I think for us, generally speaking, it was our relationships and our long term goals, but it would affect us slightly differently just depending on each of our charts. So just 
kind of ponder that what what had to be recalibrated or you know what did you have to rethink or redo over the month of october because that's where a development will be on tuesday uh, there'll be a development there so so we're working with those same energies that we've been dealing with for most of october but now we are moving full speed ahead we're making gains in these areas we're not just having to rethink and learn about these areas or address problems we have figured out the problems and now we're still dealing with the problems but we're very much moving forward in a uh, much more direct way mercury is literally direct so there we go so um so yeah so we can now proceed with confidence as we have hopefully become much more aware and structured in these areas of our lives on Wednesday, November 3rd, Moon crosses over Mercury at the end of Libra. And this m makes us reflective and observant, especially considering that we are so close to the new Moon at this point. Um, let's see. Okay, what else? And then the Moon also squares Pluto today. So the Moon just crossed over the place where Mercury was yesterday. And again, this highlights the developments in our goals and relationships one last time. So this is the very last inner planet that will cross over this area. This is a really, really big thing here that we've been working on for this past month. And finally, all the inner planets have crossed this, this particular part of the zodiac. So, so yeah, just think about that, what that means for you, because it's almost like a graduation, especially once the moon and Mercury will both leave Libra. Um, it's almost like we've graduated from some area of our lives that we've had to kind of go back over and, and to evolve in. And so, um, so yeah, it's important. Think about it. Um, let's see. Okay. So, so Wednesday is really interesting because we have the moon and Mercury at the very end of Libra. And again, you know, they are the last to, to leave this area. So this is very much a transitional phase. Uh, Wednesday, November, November 3rd is the very much the last day of a chapter not a really big chapter this isn't like a decade ending or like an era ending but it's a small chapter of our lives that's definitely ending and there's a very distinct beginning that's going to begin on no, uh, thursday november 4th um let's see yeah and again it just has to do with all these things we were working with last month i think that's enough said let's go to november 4th so thursday november 4th moon crosses over mars and conjoins the sun and what is it called when the moon conjoins the sun it's called a new moon and this one in particular is <laughs> it's it's pretty interesting i i like it it's it's very volatile so the moon let me see here this new moon is at 12 degrees scorpio and is exactly opposite uranus at 12 degrees of taurus and this makes for an extremely volatile and unpredictable new beginning. Much may come out to the surface or be revealed today, but there's also much activity behind the scenes as well. Extra volatility in finances and relationships, especially. Um, pretty much anything to do with obligations, commitments, or possessions. Obligations, commitments, or possessions. So, so what do you have possession over? What have you made plans with, or you know, committed to? Um, who has committed to you, or what has committed to you? These things are all just suddenly put into question in a very unpredictable way on November fourth. And let's see. Okay, so so yeah, this can be discomforting because you know, especially. Um, Uranus and Scorpio are they both do have a connection Uranus is exalted in Scorpio and it is in Taurus the opposing sign but they're both unpredictable and they seem to disrupt things and that can be uncomfortable you know we can get used to things and then suddenly things change that can be very disheartening also we Th this aspect is really indicative of having profound new realizations or epiphanies, um, downloads of information where we just suddenly realize like, wow, I, there's this thing that's been in front of me for months or maybe years that I just never really understood. But now I, I just see it in a whole different way. Um, that's very much very possible at this time. So this can be extremely unpleasant. It can be unpleasant to gain awareness because you realize that you've been living with something that's suddenly not acceptable. But once you make that leap in awareness, 
and start applying it, then that's, that's what evolution is. That's how you improve yourself and your life. And that's ultimately what your honest and Scorpio are asking you to do. So, so yeah, in short, there could be some uncomfortable changes with commitments, obligations, possessions. This could definitely be financial, um, could be like a stocks or, you know, economy type of thing. Nothing super major, but there could be some kind of like downturn or again, it's unexpected and humans, you know, we are always changing and yet we also don't like change. And so this, this can be un um, uncomfortable. But it's also absolutely crucial for making changes and gaining awareness. Also, I just want to highlight one more time that Scorpio is known to be secretive and to hide things. And especially with the new moon, I think this is one of those aspects that it's almost, it's yeah, I would say it's impossible to fully understand while you're experiencing it because there's too much going on and there's a lot going on behind the scenes at this time. We'll know a lot more about what happens on November 4th in the days following as the moon gains more light several days ahead then we'll start to really understand what truly began on november 4th that's how conjunctions work especially uh, new moons are no exception and hopefully that makes sense to you um let's see here what else did i write so one other aspect to this day is that Venus and Mercury, I said these two planets are changing signs this week. So they both reach, well, technically Mercury is at 28 degrees Libra, but they're both pretty much, you know, at the end of their respective signs. Mercury is at the very end of Libra for this full moon. And then Venus is at the very end of Sagittarius. And so this just makes things more karmic. Um, there's some kind of like final phase. I mean... The last couple degrees of each sign is just very karmic and it's almost like a blender, like a wheel of fortune of energies. It's all this eclectic mix of themes and that's what makes it so karmic is because it's almost like the test at the end of a class that you have to take before you graduate where you go over all the information that you learned before. And so well, I just think it's so interesting that both of these planets are at the very end of their signs simultaneously with this new moon opposing Uranus. Um, I'm not even sure exactly how to read that, but it just means that it just adds some karmic things to the mix with how we're thinking and how we're communicating and also with our desires and our relationships. Um, there's some kind of change that's happening and the major change, well, the major changes today, I suppose, um, Thursday and Friday, really. So let's go to, okay, let's go to Friday, November 5th. I'm already there, but let's go to noon noon ish eastern standard time so friday november 5th moon separates from the sun and enters sagittarius by midnight and this does lighten the mood a bit and things will become very heavy they already have um, quite a bit as we have now three going on four planets in scorpio and then we've got venus and capricorn now and let's see I do like the moon entering Sagittarius though. Let's talk more about that on Saturday because really we won't feel moon in, in Sagittarius till Saturday. Um, let's see here. Okay. So on Friday, we're still feeling reverberations from Thursday's earthquake, so to speak. Um, because yeah, we just had this new moon and again, I don't think we're even going to fully appreciate it until a couple days later, but we're still feeling the reverberations of that. Um, okay, November 5th is when we have two planets change signs. We have Venus entering Capricorn and Mercury entering Scorpio. So that is very interesting that both of them happen to change signs at the same time. Um, let's see here. Okay, and then they're also both switching from Yang to Yin. Mercury is switching from air to water and Venus is switching from fire to earth. So they're both switching from very light, expressive, uh, spontaneous energies to much more composed, um, you know, water and fire, or, or excuse me, water and earth are so much heavier. Um, so then, so Mercury and Venus switching to Scorpio and Capricorn does cool things off dramatically. And with this new prevalence of yin energy, we are much more considerate, thoughtful and reflective. 
and the energy is now much heavier and more focused and it's also more ambitious since the inner planets are clustered in scorpio with the exception of venus and capricorn so so yes yeah, suddenly now the focus is very much on scorpio but also to a lesser extent on capricorn since we also have an inner planet inner planet there as well and let's see so Scorpio and Capricorn do have a lot in common and they are different from all the other signs. So the, I would say these are the most intense and the most focused signs. Um, they're probably also the heaviest, I would say, because again, they're, they're the most heavy. They're um, the most intense or the most serious, I guess you could say. And they're also the most focused on the long term. They're the most ambitious. And so having all these planets here, it's, it's really a mix, especially having this cluster in Scorpio. There's so much that goes on with Scorpio. Scorpio is so deeply emotional, um, but also, I don't know, there's almost like this new like tingly feeling that happens when we have these Scorpio energies, um, especially on the new moon in Scorpio. A lot of times in the Northern Hemisphere, it's synonymous with cooler temperatures coming. Um, they seem to happen, especially right around the Scorpio new moon we get these cold fronts coming in and there's almost something like exciting about that um simultaneously things seem to be dying as we go into winter but at the same time it makes you feel alive at the same time um you know there's all this psychology about how cooler temperatures make humans more romantic or sexual for some reason and so there's just so much going on with scorpio and ultimately it's asking us to evolve um I think there's something in our DNA about wanting to prepare for winter or something um, like we have to be better. And that's where all these shared resource themes come in because things aren't as abundant as they were in the summer. So you have to consolidate and, str and strategize, um, you know, you're feeling very vulnerable, but Scorpio does not allow itself to be soft or sensitive. It has to get to work and make things happen and, and make sure that it can trust the people it has to work with. So those are kind of the themes that we're dealing with here as we um, go into Scorpio. But Scorpio is a great sign because it's very ambitious and productive, but it's also very creative and emotional. It can also be very intellectual. There's really a lot of sides to Scorpio. So we're experiencing this really rich blend of energies at this time, I would say. But ultimately, it is very emotional with all this water. Okay, going into Saturday, November 6th, Mercury makes an exact sextile with Venus at one degree of Scorpio and Capricorn, respectively. And real quick here, so with Mercury and Venus just recently entering these signs, Mercury entering Scorpio does make us a little bit more pessimistic. Um, we might have a more dark sense of humor or dark way of conveying things at this time. But we're also more perceptive. Um, Mercury in Scorpio is extremely perceptive and intuitive as well. It has this kind of even blend of being very mentally smart but also emotionally smart so it's it's very perceptive very intuitive it picks up on things very quick venus entering capricorn means that we're sort of what's the word we desire longevity at this time uh venus and capricorn feels romantic about commitment in a way um especially combined with all these cap with all these scorpio energies we may want to more buckle down and just commit to things at this time. And we're very focused on the future. Okay. And let's see here. Okay. And especially with Venus and Mercury sextiling each other as they begin their transits in the signs of Capricorn and Scorpio, this to me marks coordinated ambition. Um, this would be pleasant social interaction and good conversation since we're combining Venus and Mercury. But this is in a very focused, decisive, and goal-oriented context since it is happening in Scorpio and Capricorn. There's also a yod, and I have a lot of mixed feelings about this. I was debating if I should even bring this up, but <laughs> Mercury at one degree of Scorpio, sextiling Venus at one degree of Capricorn, they form a yod with North Node at one degree of Gemini. And this is exact to the degree. However, the reason why I thought about not even bringing it up is because nodes don't really make aspects the way planets would. So I would debate if this would actually do anything at all. Um, nodes could maybe make aspects with the moon or maybe the sun to a lesser extent, but 
Mercury and Venus, I'm a little bit skeptical. However, it could make things more karmic at this time. So we may, our, our thoughts and communications and our desires may have a really karmic impacting theme to them, especially in Scorpio and Capricorn. These are kind of karmic long-term signs, if you will. So, so I would say just kind of maybe take that with a grain of salt, maybe just look out for that. But I think that could result in something, maybe something small happening today that may have very long lasting effects. So just be aware of that. Moon does continue through Sagittarius, keeping things somewhat lively and upbeat. So this is like the one placement that we have in, uh, at least with the inner planets, that's in a yang sign in Sagittarius, which is very cheerful and upbeat. It's very different than Scorpio or Capricorn. And so this is nice to just kind of bring a balance to things. And it's funny because last week was so airy. We had this overabundance of air energy, and then now we have no inner planets in air whatsoever. It's very watery with just a little bit of earth and fire. So we're feeling much more deep at this time. Uh, last week and last month, for that instance, with all the air energy, things were more light, more quirky, more sociable, more playful. All those things have kind of been completely discarded and we're much more focused now. We're taking things a little bit more seriously and we're feeling much deeper about things. All right, next for Sunday. Sunday, November 7th, Moon enters Capricorn late in the day, conjoining Venus, making the vibe heavier yet also more pleasant somehow um yeah that's kind of interesting right because normally moon or any planet for that matter switching from sagittarius to capricorn um i think it can be kind of difficult switching from such an optimistic carefree sign to such a prudent rational long-term focused sign it can be almost like a a buzzkill i hate to say it but it can be difficult but this is really beautiful with Venus almost being um, there to greet the moon as it enters Capricorn. I think that's really beautiful. It does temper the some of the harder aspects of having the moon in detriment in Capricorn. So that is really sweet and beautiful. And I actually love the sextile here on Sunday between the moon and Venus in Capricorn, sextiling some of the planets, um, Sun, Mars, and Mercury in Scorpio. Because there is sort of a balance here, even though the focus is so much on these two signs, and these are very intense, heavy signs, um, you know, we could be a little bit pessimistic or too rigid at this time, we might be too focused on the future and not able to lighten up or enjoy the present. However, it is relatively balanced still because we have the earth making us grounded and um, prudent, practical, focused on our senses, but we also have this abundance of water with Scorpio, making us also emotional and intuitive and creative. So combining that, you know, physical groundedness with the emotional creativity makes for a very well-rounded dynamic. Again, it is still intense and um, maybe too focused on the future, but it's it's interesting. So I think especially as the moon starts to sextile the sun later in the day um it will be really nice we have that waxing crescent moon um, as the moon sextiles the sun and that usually makes for a vibe that is pleasant easy going um, it's going to be grounded and earthy um, but generally it'll, it'll be a calm nice day and yes the moon is in detriment however the moon is also conjunct venus so this is really the softest most beautiful Capricorn moon that you're going to get, I would say, uh, making the sextile with the sun. So, um, so yeah, it looks like a nice day to kind of just rest and relax on Sunday. So I really do like that. And let's see what else here. I think that's pretty much all I had to say. So Sunday pretty much ends with the moon beginning to sextile the sun, which makes things more harmonious and pleasant. And it also ends with Mercury approaching Mars, making our thoughts and communications intense and focused, especially being in Scorpio, which is ruled by Mars. So, um, so yeah, we may be thinking in a very edgy, controversial, sexual type of way. And our, our communications will be reflective of that we may be kind of competitive and edgy at this time but all in all i think it's a fun dynamic um i think it's we're moving forward very much so now um planets aren't retrograde like they were in the last 
few weeks or a few months for that matter. We're very much moving forward now in a new direction and I'm kind of excited to see what this will bring. So yeah, so thanks for watching and stay tuned because we're about to enter eclipse season soon. So everything is really going to change once we get into the next couple of weeks here. But thanks for watching. And um, as always, you can reach me at manic.mercurian at gmail.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.